Hey friends, welcome back to another Friday Faith Foundation episode. We're at the end of May, which I cannot believe the month has flown by. I swear each month goes faster and faster, the older I get. <laughs> but um, this concludes our series on mental health awareness. And today we're going to talk about how God speaks to us. When we are feeling anxious or doubtful or fearful, oftentimes we aren't listening. We're not pausing. And so we're going to talk about some scripture verses that you can lean into. And I want to share a story with you that happened to me this week. And I think it's going to be a really great example of how God speaks to us, how he uses scripture and the incredible fact that the Old Testament has so many valuable lessons that we also see correlated to the New Testament. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And before I jump in, I just want to remind you that I'm going to be taking some time off this summer and just stepping back a little bit, giving myself some time to rest and re-strategize about the podcast and everything. We will be publishing our Tuesday um, traditional standard episodes, but the Friday Faith Foundation episodes, I'm going to pause just for the summer. And you can follow us on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's the Robin Graham, just like everywhere else that I am online. And I will be doing like many short videos there throughout the summer. And there will be new content fresh on the blog as well. So if you want reminders of what's being published, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the blog, or just subscribe to the email list because we have um, the updates that go out periodically there and you'll be able to stay abreast of anything new that is being published. But YouTube will be where I do just short clips um, just to show up. Hey, Kim, I am starting the recording over at this point. My dog went crazy, so I needed to pause and I'm just going to start over. So here we go. Hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. Today is a Friday Faith Foundation episode, and this will be our final one for the summer. It's the end of May. The month flew by, and this is the last episode in our mental health awareness month of May. And I want to let you know that for the summer, I will be over on YouTube periodically doing Friday Faith Foundation episodes there. Uh, they may even be on other days of the week when I show up. I need to take some time to rest this summer and step back. I want to re-strategize about the podcast. If there is content you would like to see in the fall, if there is anything you'd like us to change or update, I would love to hear from you. It would warm my heart and give me such an honor to hear from you and have your input on the show and upcoming content and the way that we actually publish. So please feel free to reach out on any social platform or you can email me at info at therobingraham.com and share your thoughts. Um, I will put the link to the YouTube channel in the show notes. The other way to stay abreast of new blog posts or anything that's that's happening will be to subscribe to the email list. And that's super easy. You can just go to the, the website to do that, therobingraham.com. And that way you don't miss any of the updates this summer. There will be some masterclasses coming up. There's a lot going to happen, and that is one of the reasons I'm kind of just going to give myself the, the break here so that I can come at everything fresh in the fall. All right, so as we conclude the Mental Health Awareness Month episodes, today we're going to talk about how God speaks to us, how even when we don't realize we need him, he communicates with us. I want to share a story of basically what happened to me this week and how powerful scripture is. We know that God speaks to us through his word. His, the Bible is 
inerrant. It is breathed by the Holy Spirit, breathed into being by the Holy Spirit through the hands of the people they chose to, that he chose to write the, the Bible. So we know that the advice we can garner there is solid. It's trustworthy. It is going to have an impact and potentially, most likely, change our lives. So I want to talk a little bit about that today, and I hope you'll enjoy this episode, and I would love to hear from you as to how you experience God speaking to you. Is it through other people? Is it through scripture? Would love to hear from you. All right, so let's dive in. I, this week, was reading the book of Exodus, and from Chapter four-ish to chapter 14 is where my focus was. And, I, you know, Moses was quite a guy. In many ways, he was a hero. But when God first asked him to go to Egypt and rescue the Israelites from slavery, he hemmed and hawed. He was succumb with doubt and fear. He even asked God to choose someone else. He wondered what to say if the people asked him or questioned why they should listen to him. It's funny because (laughs) actually it's not funny, but it's kind of funny how this happens in my life all the time. How often do you question? whether God is speaking to you? Do you question your purpose or your ability to fulfill it? I have a million times plus. Trusting in the unseen is difficult, especially when life and business are challenging or overwhelming or one feels weary, which can be common in our roles as business owners and entrepreneurs. The story of Moses is an example of trust and an example of salvation. And both still apply to our lives today. Salvation is a daily blessing from the Holy Spirit as a result of Jesus' death, resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. The gift of the Holy Spirit is one of the greatest gifts that if we believe in Jesus as our Savior, if we have a relationship with him, the Holy Spirit resides in us. We have this source, this supernatural power that comes straight from heaven. And there is nothing that we can't ask, seek, or receive from him. So in Exodus 14, the the Israelites had escaped Egypt and they were at the edge of the Red Sea and they look behind them and Pharaoh and his army are right on their tail and they panicked. They cried out to Moses and they said, well, we should have just stayed in Egypt and died there. Was there no place for us to be buried? Is that why you brought us out here to to the desert? They were totally in a place of doubt as to why Moses had led them out when they were just going to die at the hands of Pharaoh anyway. They lost trust in God, who had brought them thus far in their journey. So Moses told them to be still and watch as God saved them. When Moses was experiencing this fear and doubt and anxiety from the Israelites, he too began to cry out. And and God said to him, why are you crying to me? Use your staff, hold it over the sea, and it will part so that the Israelite can cross. And when Moses listened, the sea was parted for the Israelites. They were saved. That was their salvation. Now, I'm paraphrasing here and shortening the story, obviously, but the point is that God provided help for Moses so that he could accomplish what God had called him to. He didn't have an easy job. 
But look at how God guided him and gave him the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, and every single thing he needed to be able to lead the Israelites to safety. God still provides for us today, and he communicates with us. Even when we don't know or don't recognize that we need him. When we don't know what to do, we need to listen. So interestingly enough, and this is, you know, how God speaks to us or communicates with us in multiple ways. So I was reading about Moses and his fear and anxiety and doubt and his lack of trust, similar to those negative mindsets that I and my clients often experience. The devotion I was reading emphasized how God communicated with Moses and provided for him and how we too can trust God to provide for us. Especially when we're feeling that that doubt, that fear, the anxiety, God is there to give us peace. And I'm going to share some scripture verses to help you recognize that and feel assured of that. But doing the devotions wasn't the last time I heard about Moses this week. While working with my coach, we were having a discussion and she brought Moses up again. But this time, the story reminded me to pause and seek the Lord when deciding on things in my business. Sometimes, I I don't know if you feel this way, but sometimes for me, I'll be having just an explosive month. Everything's going great. New clients are coming in. And all of a sudden, I'm feeling this sense of like something's looming or my anxiety is is not my anxiety, but anxiety um, is, is rising. Like I just feel something and I can't pinpoint it. And oftentimes, I think that God's waking me up to something. He wants me to pause. He wants me to ask him a question or two so that he can tell me what it is he wants me to do next. Or, you know, maybe there's something I need to pull away from. Maybe there's something I need to put a pause on for a while. I'm not one to pause. And I often forget to pray. Instead, I jump right in. I decide and I go for it. Or on the flip side of that coin, I overthink it. But the closer that I grow to the Lord by reading scripture and spending time with him, really developing a relationship with him, the better I get at asking him for help and seeking him and his wisdom, and his knowledge, and his guidance on my decisions. I still have a long way to go, but I'm learning, and I'm getting better with time. When God places a desire on our hearts, or gives us a purpose, or calls us to something, he will provide all we need to accomplish that task what he wants us to do, just like he did Moses. If he places a desire, he's going to deliver the tools we need. If he gives you a purpose, which he does, we all have a purpose, he's going to provide all you need to accomplish it. God speaks to us through scripture and other humans, as I experienced this week, not once, but twice. Before we leave Moses, I want to share how incredibly brilliant the Holy Spirit is. When he breathed the word of scripture into being, into the writers of each book within the Bible, he had a plan that could not have been designed by anyone but God. Thousands of years before Jesus walked the earth, Moses was an example of what Jesus is for us. Scarlet Hitbiddle summarizes the similarities between Moses and Jesus like this. Moses confronted Pharaoh. Jesus confronted Satan, sin, and death. 
Moses led the Israelites from physical slavery to the promised land, to freedom, to salvation. Jesus leads us from spiritual slavery to freedom. Moses lifted his staff to make a way for the Israelites to cross the Red Sea. Jesus lifted his body on the cross so that we can go from spiritual death to eternal life. Moses served, died, and was buried. Jesus served, died, and was buried, left the grave behind, ascended to glory, and lives eternally at the right hand of God the Father and rules the world. Moses was good, but Jesus is better. God created all things, including people. Therefore, he is better than all things, including people. That means he's no, he knows better than we do. So why don't we depend on him more? He is the best possible resource available to us. With him, there is always a way. There is nothing that's impossible for him. Yes, things will seem completely scary, completely frightening, and completely impossible to us. But to him, nothing is impossible. So I promised earlier that I was going to give you some additional Bible st Bible verses. So I'm going to do that. And before I do, I just want to remind you that the moral of the story here is to pause. We cannot hear God if we are always in motion, doing and working. Pause and pray. Then pause and listen. Like Moses told the Israelites to do so that they could see God's salvation. Because he does speak to you and he does speak to me. He communicates with us. Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. On those days that you're feeling weary or overwhelmed, think about this verse. Psalm 4, 8. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. When you're feeling conflicted or fearful, remember that the Lord is there to keep you safe. Psalm 121, 2 to 4. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. You may feel tired and weary. I may feel tired and weary. But God never does. He is always available and attentive to our needs. Pause and seek him before making decisions. When in need of rest, or whenever anxiety bubbles up within you and you need help silencing the chaos of your mind, turn to him. True peace comes from him. Lastly, as a reminder, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If he has called you to a purpose, he's going to make sure that all things work for good. Friend, God has placed a desire on your heart. He has called you to a something great, to a purpose greater than what we can even imagine. Don't let fear, doubt, and anxiety hold you back. Pause, listen, and let him lead you. 
And let's connect. If you struggle with a negative mindset as you try to grow your business, if you feel like you're doing all the things with minimal results, let's connect. Schedule a free strategy call with me to learn the next best steps to grow your business with simplicity and peace. The link to my calendar is in the show notes. Thanks for being here, friends. And as always, if you know anyone who would find this episode inspiring, if you know anyone who may be struggling with fear, doubt, anxiety, or maybe questioning their faith and whether or not God really cares about them or wants to hear from them, share this episode with them. It may just change their life. And feel free to share it on any social platform. And if you do, tag me, The Robin Graham so that I can then share it and get attention on you and your business too. All right, have a fabulous weekend and adios to May, but hello to summer.